when we were originally shooting this talk, I forgot to say something. So we have started with this differential equation, dx dt is square root 1 minus x squared. We got the stationary solution, so the solutions were which are roots of this, so the constant functions. And then we said for the non-stationary, you have to solve this uh, as a separable differential equation. And we got to this point, x is sine t plus c, where t is from minus c minus pi over 2 to minus c plus pi over 2. Now, uh, and c could be any real number, so that's the parameter. Now, after you got the solution in this interval, you want to extend to all real numbers, like extend to t being all real numbers. And we said, well, if t is to the right of this point, the function has to remain 1, because already at this point it's 1, and we observed that the function has to remain between minus 1 and 1, and it cannot ever go down, it has to be constant or increasing, and that forces the uh, function to remain 1 to the right of minus c plus pi over 2. We also checked that, we also showed that when t is uh, to the left of minus c minus pi over 2, okay, then the function has to remain minus 1, because it's already minus 1 at this point, and then if you go further left, it has to remain in this interval, but it couldn't have been bigger because it cannot go down. So we had shown, therefore, that the function is minus 1 to the left of this point, it's 1 to the right of this point, and in between it's sine t plus c. That's the description we got. Now, the, the only thing I didn't check is that this actually satisfies the original differential equation. Because a priori, it could be possible that, that yes, there's nothing else that can work, but even this doesn't work, right? It's possible that there's nothing that works. Uh, there's no way of extending the solution globally. So that, that's a possibility we didn't rule out, and we want to do that now. We're going to check that this satisfies the differential equation. Now, how do you check that a function satisfies a differential equation? Well, the obvious idea is you plug the function in and you check that the equation is true. But the important thing you should remember is you have to check the equality of these as an identity in t, which means you have to check that these expressions are equal for all t, for all time t, what are the independent variable, for all values of the independent variable, the expressions are equal. Now, we have, we already have x as a function of t, well it's actually a function parameterized by a constant c, so for any fixed value of c you have a function x, we can calculate both of these, both of these will again be functions of t, we have to check that they are equal as functions of t. Let's do that. So let's first calculate dx dt as a function of t, how do we do that? Well this is differentiation dx dt, differentiation of a piecewise definition function, a function with piecewise definition by interval. When you have this type of a description, there are, there are some rules for differentiating that, which we covered in a separate video. If you haven't seen that video, it's fine, we'll just quickly review the technique. If it confuses you, you can go back and watch the video. On any of the open intervals, sort of away from the points where it's changing definition, at any of, anywhere else, you just differentiate the expressions as they are given. So to the left of minus c minus pi over 2, you just differentiate this. Between these two points, you just differentiate this. To the right of this, you just differentiate this. Straightforward. At the points of transition, you have to check two things. First, you have to check that the value, uh, so the, the function itself is continuous, which means you have to check that the left-hand limit, the value, and the right-hand limit are equal. Okay? And then, which means you basically have to check that the left side definition, right side definition, when you plug in, you get the same thing if the value is included in one of the definitions. And then you have to check the derivatives. For the derivatives, you already calculate the derivatives on both side expressions. You plug in the value on both of those sides. You check that the values are equal. If the left hand derivative and right hand derivative values are equal, then in fact the function is differentiable and the derivative is thus equal values. So let's do it in this case. So dx dt, well, let's first do the intervals. So take a, take a few seconds just to think about what the derivative of these three functions are. Okay. So, so you have the derivative of uh, minus 1 is 0, the derivative of sine t plus c is cosine t plus c, and the derivative of 1 is 0, because these two are constant functions, this is just sine differentiation. Okay, right now, we cannot say anything about the boundary points. You have to check that. 
Okay, so right now we just have it on the open intervals. So zero, the left of minus sinus square root, this between and this set. So now we can check the boundary point separately. Let's look at this boundary point, the circled one. It's shared between these two definitions, minus c minus pi over two. The left hand limit and value are minus one. The right hand limit is what you get in this thing when you plug in minus c minus pi over two. You get sine of minus pi over two, which is also minus one. You can take a while to check what I said, but basically all three are equal. Left hand limit, value, and right hand limit. So the function is continuous at this point. What about the derivative? Well, the left hand derivative is zero because it is a left side expression continued till the point. Okay. The right hand derivative is this expression plugged in minus e minus pi over 2. You get cosine of minus pi over 2, which is zero. So left hand derivative and right hand derivative agree. So the derivative at the point is equal to the value zero. Now you could put the equality sign on this or this because so you could put an equality sign here or here. I'll just put it here because uh, because that's how I did it up here. Similarly, for for this boxed function minus c, sorry, so this box point minus c plus pi over two, the function is continuous. Okay, the right hand limit and value are one. The left hand limit when you plug in this minus c plus pi over two, you get sine pi over two, which is one. Agreement. Okay. Now you are now have to check the derivative exists. So the left hand derivative is cosine t plus c plug in this point. You'll get cosine of pi over two, which is zero. The right hand derivative will be zero. So they agree. So the derivative is zero. And now you can put equality either here or here. I'll put it here. Okay. So I'm just trying to match this. So we got dx dt as a piecewise function. Now what we want, we want to do the right side as a piecewise function. Okay. And that's pretty straightforward. We just do square root one minus each of these under this thing. Okay. And, uh, and, and we don't have to worry about the endpoints or anything. We just copy down everything like it's here. And take a minute to think about that. What will that be? Okay. So it's going to be like this. So it's going to be zero for t to the left of minus c e minus pi two, including the point. Okay, this is square root of one minus minus one square. It's going to be zero to the right of minus c e plus pi two because square root of one minus one square. The only thing you need to think a bit about is is this one. So I have the calculation here. So we have to do square root of one minus this thing square, right? Square root of cosine square t plus c because sine square plus cosine square is one. That's the absolute value of cosine t plus. Remember, when you're taking square root, it's always the absolute value of of the expression. It's, but in this case, you can drop the absolute value sign because you know that cosine t plus c is non-negative. Why is that? Well, we can go back to how we originally got this. We had that t plus c is in minus pi over two to pi over two because it's in the range of arc sine. Okay, and we know that in the range of arc sine, that is in this interval minus pi over two to pi over two, cosine is non-negative. That's one of the facts about the range of arc sine, which means that you can actually drop the absolute value and get this. And now you have this. So now we have expressions for dx dt and square root one minus x square. We have to check their equal as functions. We have to check their equal everywhere. And they are. Okay, same, exact same. Okay. Uh, by the way, there were also two stationary solutions. Okay. So the, so what I've done now is I have verified that you have all these as genuine solutions. You also have the stationary solutions. And what I had earlier said that there cannot be anything else. So basically these are precisely all the solutions. Okay.